<laughs> What's up, folks? Hey, we're here to talk to you about the last one of the Dawn of X releases, uh, Fallen Angels number one. This gives us like the whole slate of Dawn of X titles. Um, the most psychedelic of all the books, that's for sure. And yeah, very, I thought it was psychedelic. You didn't think it was psychedelic? That's not a word I would use to describe it. I would. I mean, you got like black blood coming out of people's eyes and stuff like that. Yeah. The most like, the most, that the one that would most remind you of like a, a 90s horror film or something like The Grudge or something. You know, that's what it made, that's what it put me in the mindset of though. You didn't think that? No. No? She didn't remind you of the chick climbing out of the TV in the well? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, well, or the ring, I, rather? Yeah, I can see that, I guess, with the black and the stuff coming down. Yeah, yeah that's, this reminds me of one of those uh, Japanese horror flicks. Oh, yeah, I yeah. guess I can see that. I expected a hand to come out of somebody's head. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, Nudes. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel! <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. Right, right. Yeah, it was, uh, for me, it was a really psychedelic book. Um, this book is basically about uh, Quanon, who was actually... Uh, a part of a uh, ah man, that story is complicated. Basically, um, the Quan inside of Psylocke decides that she's gonna, you know, she's free from uh, Betsy Braddock, and she decides to go on her own little thing. So it's um, it this book uh revolves around Quan in, in her new uh, Psylocke persona, uh, Baby Cable, who I don't even see as a real Cable man. I don't, I don't care much yeah. for Baby Cable, yeah, okay. and um, X twenty three. So. Yeah, you know, it's a book with the 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 renegades. You know, they're like the little the, the the teenagers that are going out and getting in trouble, basically. But it's not so much about that. They do actually put a story, you know, um, in there. Uh, Quentin is getting these visions and and so forth about like this nefarious being, and they set off on a on a quest to find out who this person is, and you know, it, it's it's that type of story. Although I I did think it was um I thought it was interesting. Um, I thought the art was was the art was beautiful. Like it. Yeah, the art was whoo man. It makes the X Men art just look all all the all the worse. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, the artwork was great. Um the story reminds you of like a, a, a indie film to me, like the way it was presented. And um for the most part though, it's a it's a it's a decent read, you know. It's a um it's a good first issue for Fallen Angels, I believe. I don't I'm not really sure about where they're going with the series, but you know, it's an interesting idea. I'm just hoping that they have more, more members, you know, of the, of this group. Cause right now there's only the three and they did say something about recruiting more people at the end, you know, people that could be trusted. So uh, those are my uh, initial thoughts. Uh, what did you think? I like the art. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. And so it starts off with some girl on a bus. Um, I mean, a train or whatever. On, on, on one of those, uh, trains in japan i get probably yeah. one of those bullet trains right and um she has a yeah she has a tattoo of like a butterfly or something on the back of her neck and she's standing there i don't know if this is her talking or is somebody in third person just talking about quanon yeah i think quanon is the one that's telling the, that's uh our narrator for this story okay so maybe quanon you know ugh, i'm sorry i'm I, the quanon is sounds so call her psylocke then me. just call her psylocke. i don't want to call her psylocke well, I guess, is her name Psylocke? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Psylocke is narrating the story, and it starts off with this girl um, in Japan on this train, and um, she has some type of apparatus that she hooks up to her ear, um, and it goes onto her um, her brain. It, it reminds you of that movie. It, it reminds me of all those Strange, future- strange, strange days, I think it was, when they know, were... It just reminds me all of all these futuristic movies where in the future they have these things on their on their side of their... Um, that they can hook up to their face or brain and you can, like, see everything. That's just what it reminds me of. I don't, I don't yeah, think that's what it's, it is. It's, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a drug like without chemicals. Like some type chemicals. of neural device or whatever. Yeah, so it, anyway, the lady or girl, whoever she is, puts it on, puts it on, and then when she, when she puts it on, then her then you see all the you know she gets this like this mean look in her face and her eyes turn black and then she has black like tears or blood or whatever streaming down her face and then she just gets really fucking pissed off and then she just started like she broke off something a pipe in a train and then she just started like beating people with it. I'm like, so at the time when I first initially read this, I didn't realize that that was like a drug. I thought she put it on and somebody was like mind controlling her. So she, yeah, she puts that on and she just started 
taking people or she just started, you know, whooping people's ass. Like, just, ugh, you know, <laughs> like. Killed the majority really, of the train. Yeah, huh? she just, yeah, just started whacking motherfuckers and just, you know, whatever. And uh, she killed the conductor on the train, you said? Yeah, she yeah. Just she just bashed his bra- head she, in and everything. Yeah. And the train just crashed into, you know, this building or whatever. And then, it, you know, and the next thing, it cuts to Psylocke in this peaceful, like, meditative state and talking about, you know, um, talking about how she 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 wanted to invite someone to the island. Was she talking about, like, her child when she was narrating the story? Uh, yeah. Because she said we both deserve mercy or something at this point. Like, you don't remember anything? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. Did you pay attention to the story? <laughs> <laughs> No, I just really don't pay attention. I was just she's talking. She's talking about the sun, and you know, she's talking about all these positive things with you know Krakoa, and she wanted to invite someone there. I don't know if she was just thinking about her daughter from long ago or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, you know, she's sitting there like in this meditative state, kind of floating in the air, and she's thinking all these beautiful, nice, calming thoughts, and then all of a sudden, I don't know who this was that came. It's like a black shadow, look like an angel or something. Yeah, it's I don't know. Apath or whatever is what Yeah, they so it. then they come to her and tell her that she has an enemy um, named Apoth or yeah. Apoth. I just said Apoth. Your enemy is Apoth. Apoth and um, tell they, they say that she must kill a god. So she's freaking out like, what is this? What's going on? And then she goes to Magneto. Um, well, first she sees this vision of, I guess, was it her home? Back in Japan, or yeah. Whatever. She so she sees this vision of a home back in Japan, and she sees a vision of a baby. Yeah, and and, um, and like while she was being trained as an assassin, they took the baby from her. Yeah, and so she goes to Magneto and lets him know that she needs to leave Krakoa Island because she had this this I guess vision or whatever, and that she needs to go check out what's going on because she felt like there's something wrong, and and basically because Professor X was killed, everybody is on lockdown. Basically, no one in or out of the island. I'm assuming. Yeah. And so he told her that no, she can't go, officially. But hey, maybe you can go talk to uh, Mister Sinister. Sinister, and maybe he can help you out. But officially, you can't leave off the island. But you know, go over here and talk to Mister Sinister and see what and see what. Sin- Sinister got ways to do things. Yeah, you know, go talk to him. <laughs> which honestly, I don't understand why he did that. Why did he send her to Mister Sinister? What are your thoughts on that? Well, he can't have any involvement in anything contrary to what the official laws of the island are. And if everything is supposed to be on lockdown, he can't, you know, he can't tell her she could go because then it would bring up dissension or whatever. Um, But why Mr. Sinister? Well, because he's the one. Well, remember, Magneto used to be a bad guy, so... It's like he feel comfortable sending him to another yeah, quote unquote I mean, bad guy. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. they're all supposed to be on the same team now yeah. anyway. So he's like, yeah, you know, we don't want to start no stuff or anything. We don't want to create any kind of any kind of uh, confusion here. But yeah, he'll take care. He'll okay. Care. So she went to go see Mister Sinister, and she told him about I guess her visions and everything. And he's basically asking her like, why are you coming to me? And she told him that Magneto, you know, sent her or whatever. And he asked her some questions and, and she's telling him about her story. So then he starts asking her about killing and things of that nature. And at one point, you know, he was like, hey, you're kind of boring me. So like, hey, you know, get, get to it. it up. Step it up. Get to <laughs> it on why I should help you because right now you're boring me and you're wasting my time. And then also, so then he started asking her questions about like what it felt like when she first killed someone and everything. And she talked about that. It felt good. And he said... He was asking her questions about that, and uh, why did she? Uh, he was he asking mentioned. if she would, uh, if she would be, uh, if she would kill uh, Betsy, Betsy Braddock, who, who took over her body for a while. The one that's Captain Britain now. Over oh, in, uh, yeah. Oh, you could kill her to punish her, and how would he ask her? How would she kill her? And she said the same way she kills everyone, which is what with her quickly. I oh think yeah, she quickly. Said. Yeah, quickly or whatever. So. Because Quentin was an assassin And before. then he started asking her, would you allow her to scream? And then she's like, look, are you going to help me leave Kokoro or what? <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, he was like, yeah, but you might want to get some people with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, keep going. So she ended up she ends up getting um, Cable and X-23. 
But X-23 yeah. is like, nah, you know, well, it's funny because they're all out there partying and everything. And X-23 and Cable are out there like squabbing sparring, or whatever, sparring. sparring. Yeah, and yeah so, so she's she like, okay. I'm like, okay, everybody over here is kumbaya. Which, he's why is everybody partying time. when Xavier just got killed? But anyway. Well, they probably, I mean, they know he's dead and everything is on lockdown. But they, you know, I'm pretty sure that they waiting to bring, you know, they're in the process of bringing him back. But in the meantime, like, yeah, we on, you know, high security alert. Nobody in or off the island right now because they killed, you know, Xavier. So, of course, we have a party. <laughs> that just doesn't make sense to me. But, okay, anyway. I mean, I understand why, well, you know, you think it doesn't make sense. And I kind of, you know, yes, it doesn't make sense. But you also want to get everybody's mind off of the fact that they were just attacking the perspective of the and, and stuff like that <laughs> and whatever. Anyway. So, anyway, they do flash back to her years of, in, in Japan when she was being brought up as an assassin. And, um, yeah, she apparently she had a baby that they took from her. Mm -hmm. And they said that... Um, that if the world was, um, I don't know. If, if, if the fates were kind, basically, yeah, maybe she'd see her again. You'll, you, you know, maybe one day you'll see your child again or whatever. And they told her that they would mark her child. Um, I guess maybe some she'll know who she was or something. I don't know. And apparently it was the butterfly on the back of the neck. Yeah, they put a so, butterfly test so on she the thinks, back of the neck. I'm assuming she thinks that the girl that on the train that beat up everybody. Well, well when are, they went and they investigated and everything, you know, um... Of course, the people they interrogated wouldn't cooperate, so she hit her with a little psychic thing or whatever so she can get in her head, and she saw, like, the vision of um, what happened and everything on the train and whatnot, and she saw that the person that ended up going nuts and overdosing on this drug or whatever it is that they put in their head, that uh, she had the tattoo of the butterfly on the back of her. So it's like the cold part is that, okay... The last time she saw her her baby, it was as a, as a little baby, and they took her away from her. Now the next thing is she's seeing that she's grown up into this person who OD'd on this stuff and and took out everybody, including herself. So yeah, of course she's like highly pissed, and she's like, okay, I gotta go after these people that put this drug yeah. out, who happens to be Apoff, the same person that she was warned about. So now her her whole goal is to get people together that can kind of go there, like. I guess kind of separate from like the whole X Men stuff because these folks are they woofus they squab and they doing all this other stuff. So our, her recruits so far are just X twenty three and Cable. Yeah, is Cable with them? I thought X twenty three. X-23 told her to leave Cable behind. Yeah, he told her to leave. She told him to leave Cable behind. But at the end, we see that Cable is back and they're about to like go and, and do the little mission thing or whatever and get more people that they feel they can trust. Right now, she feels that they're the only two people that she can trust because they're the only ones who aren't sitting up soft because of the security and all that stuff. And X-23's whole thing is she wants to get from out of Wolverine's shadow and she wants to go and yeah, do her own thing. So that's why she went. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it looks like a promising beginning. Yeah, you know, I I'll like be the, honest. I like yeah. the storyline. Uh, yeah, I like yeah. The, the it, it was story. the 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 storytelling was done in like that little kind of flashback and then back to the back to the present sort of thing, which reminded me, like I said before, of like an independent film or something. But yeah, uh, and whoever this Apoth person is, he he can control or speak through the people that are being controlled by. Yeah, the yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, and she yeah, opened the door and it was a room full of kids or teenage or kids. They're really well, teenagers maybe. And they all were looked like they were possessed or whatever. And he was using them to speak to her. And then when yeah. he was done speaking to her, it's like they just died. Off. They just died. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, cold. It was, that yeah. was pretty cold. Here, yeah. he puts you in the mind of uh, the Shadow King, the old X-Men villain, the Shadow, Shadow King, to me. But, you know, we'll see as everything continues. But it's an intriguing start. Um yeah, I like it's, it. It's, it. To me, this is one of one of my uh, one of the books that I would want to stay following. This is probably like my third favorite of all of them. Of course, my favorite is Marauders, uh, followed by X Force, and this would probably be like a a, a close third. Um, what would you What would you rate it like as far as like giving it a rating? I liked it. I give it an eight. <clears throat> yeah, I liked it. Give it a solid eight. Yeah, yeah. you know what? I'd probably I'd say about the same. I'd say about the same. I'd give it an eight as well. Yeah. So it was now fun. She's looking, for, yeah, she's looking for a team. It was fun. It was nice. So, I think she's planning on, uh, she she said that they're all caterpillars right now, X-23. Yeah, and, yeah, in um, Cable. Yeah, and he Cable. Says, but then she was like, but I can make you into butterflies. Yeah, that was pretty I cool. That was, was what they were told. Yeah. That's what they said to her when she, when she, when she was, was young and they yeah. were training her to be an assassin. So, yep. yeah, it looks to be interesting. I mean, yep. a team led by Psylocke. That'll be interesting. Yep. All right, All right, so that's our take. 
Um, we'll be back next time with our review of X Men number two. Uh, till then, we're signing off. <laughs> okay. On a spaceship or something? Bye bye. Yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs>